Hi, I'm Joyce Alice, and this is The Joyful Eye. We had an old, beat-up, crummy, really crummy mailbox. It was a disgrace, really. And I made it into a cute bumblebee mailbox. In this video, I'll tell you how I did it, step by step. I made some mistakes along the way, and I'll tell you about those too, so you can avoid them. So if you want to make a bumblebee mailbox, you will need soap and water and some white vinegar, black and yellow spray paint, masking tape, two hex bolts, a quarter inch by four inches long with two nuts each, two white plastic putty knives for the wings, two short bolts with a nut and washer each to uh, fasten the putty knives to the mailbox, and a wood plaque and some three inch tall black house numbers. And possibly you might need some outdoor silicone chalk. For, as far as tools go, you will need a cordless power drill and bits. Um, you'll need bits that will work with met that will cut through metal, that will drill through metal. Um, a hardware gauge is optional, but it's really nice to be able to tell what size bit you want to match with your bolt size. You'll need a screwdriver, a pair of pliers and a wrench, or two pairs of pliers some rags, and then some incidental things like scissors, paper, and pencil, and so on. So, let's get started. Um, the first step is to prep the mailbox. So you wash it with soap and water, and then I sanded it lightly by hand. Um, then I read the back of the spray can of paint, and it said that it would not, the paint would not adhere to galvanized metal. And I wasn't sure what that was, so I looked it up on the internet, and apparently it's a process they do to steel. And since I wasn't sure if our mailbox was steel or aluminum, I think it is aluminum, but I went ahead and rubbed it down with white vinegar, which I read about in another article, uh, just to be on the safe side. So if you um, have doubts about the metal of your mailbox, you probably want to do a little more research on galvanized steel and white vinegar. Um, anyway, that's what I did. Then I looked at the numbers that were on there and they were stuck on so good and tight, I just didn't want to try to get them off. So I decided to just leave them on and I would paint over them. And meanwhile, I made a temporary house number sign out of cardstock and covered it with um, clear packing tape to protect it from the rain. Step two is um, the stripes. So first you're going to uh, cover your, the flag and a few other places on the mailbox with masking tape. And then you simply take your black spray paint and, and paint the sides, the back, and the inside of the mailbox with the black paint. And you would want to apply your paint after the mailman delivers your mail so the paint will have as much time as possible to dry before he delivers mail again the next day. Next you want to mask off the black areas and spray paint the yellow stripes. My mailbox was 18 and a half inches long so I divided this length into three yellow stripes that were each three inches wide and four black stripes that were each two and three-eighths inches wide. And in order to put the, the uh, stripe lines in the right place and make them all uniform, 
I cut two paper strips, one two and three eighths inches wide and one three inches wide to act as guides for where to put the masking tape. And I simply sort of leapfrogged the strips as I laid down the tape onto the mailbox. And that helped me to um, put the masking tape in the right place. The masking tape is green. I used that um, frog tape for this project. Then I spray painted the mailbox with yellow spray paint um, right over the masking tape. And when I took off the masking tape, I found my first mistake. The yellow spray paint had got, some of it had gotten under the edges of the masking tape and I had overspray in the black stripe areas. And um, I think part of the reason was because my mailbox metal has little ridges in it. It's not perfectly smooth. Also on the inside of the mailbox, I don't think maybe it was quite as dry as the outside because part of the paint came off with the masking tape just inside the box. So to fix my mistake, I had to mask the yellow parts um, of the mailbox and apply a second coat of the black paint to cover up the yellow overspray. But this time I was a lot more careful about how I held the spray can nozzle. I tried to keep it at a right angle to the masking tape and not try to keep it from getting under the edges. And when I removed the masking tape this time, the stripes were clean and nice looking. And uh, so it's kind of, it took time to fix that mistake, but it came out good. Um, there's one place in the one side where there's actually a little bit of black overspray, but I'm not going to worry about that. Step three is the face. I measured the length and width of the front door of the mailbox and I made a paper template to fit. Then I drew the face on the template and I used the leftover house numbers to cut out shapes to fit the face template. So I would, uh, the eyes and the nose were just, I could cut out the whole shape. But for the mouth, I didn't have any numbers long enough to cut out a, a continuous curve. So I just used small pieces and put them together to make the large smile. Then I marked um, the shape, around the shapes, and I cut, cut out the uh, places where the shapes would go. Then I taped it onto the mailbox and that guided me in putting the features on the face in the correct positions. And then the little bumblebee mailbox has a happy face on the front. Part four is the antennae and wings. The long bolts will become the antennae and the short bolts are used to fasten the plastic putty knives to the mailbox, which will become its wings. They should be spray painted black. Um, and it's very important, I think, that the size of the metal bit that will drill the hole for the bolt should be exactly the same size as the bolt. Um, and that's where the hardware gauge is really useful because it can help you to make sure that you have the right size bit. You don't want any gaps where water can get into the mailbox. And um, when you're ready to drill, 
you need to drill a pilot hole first by starting with the sm a much smaller bit and then go gradually to larger and larger sizes until you reach the size that um, matches the bolt. Then you put one of the nuts onto the four inch bolt and put it into the hole for the antennae and then screw on the other nut at the bottom inside the mailbox and tighten it by holding the bottom nut with one pair of pliers and tightening the top nut with the other pair till you get it really tight. And this is where I made a second mistake. I didn't think to put the flag up first before I decided to drill for the antennae. And luckily it didn't matter because I can still raise the flag. But you should actually raise your flag and make sure that the antennae is not going to interfere with the flag. Um, and then you just drill holes for the short bolts for the wings and those go in from the inside so that you don't have something sticking out on the inside for mail to get caught in. So far I haven't had any leaks but I'm going to let it rain a couple more times and make sure. But if necessary, I might put a little silicone caulking around the places where I put the bolts in. Step five is the house number. I got a wooden, little wooden plaque at Walmart in their craft department. Um, I drilled a small hole in each corner first and then I spray painted front and back. It took two or three coats of the spray spray paint and um, there were three inch letters and I cut away the white background so because I wanted the black on the yellow and um, measured this to center them right and then I used a strip of masking tape to keep them straight and then you just peel and stick and take off the masking tape and there's your um, house number plaque and I attached it to the post with wire and actually um, this is one of the things that I'm not completely satisfied with um, but it's going to stay the way it is until spring because the weather is just too cold now to um, add the finishing touches that I want to to my bumblebee mailbox. But when the weather warms up, I'm planning to spray paint the post black and then I'm going to make an identical house number plaque um, to put on the other side and that way you won't have to look at the wires on the other side. And um, there is one other mistake that I made. I painted the flag yellow. And after I painted it yellow, I looked up the rule on the internet. And the Postal Service rules say that um, you can have any color flag except brown, white, green, blue, or yellow. And they prefer fluorescent orange. So, but that should be fairly simple to fix. I'm going to look for some sort of orange um, adhesive and maybe even reflective uh, plastic that I can just stick on to the flag. Maybe I can cut it to fit and stick on to the flag and that will fix that. And then the other improvements can wait until the spring. But in the meantime, my little bumblebee mailbox is perfectly functional. Thanks for watching. The joyful eye sees the hand of God in the wonders of his creation.